place. One, two, three, four, five, at least six RVs deep right now. That's crazy. You gonna Thank jump in the you. truck here? We're off the Strathcona Provincial Park. Hi. Good morning, guys. It's kind of like a cold and dreary morning this morning on Vancouver Island. We're checking out of Little Qualcomm Falls Provincial Park, which is just kind of like north of Nanaimo, and we're heading further north today. It's a travel day, and we're heading to Strathcona Provincial Park. If I remember correctly, I think it's BC's first provincial park. We went there, I think, two years ago now. We made a couple videos there, and it was so, so much fun, so we're excited to head back there. And this time, with Chloe. You talking to the guys without me? Yes. Would you like to come in? Morning, guys. <laughs> I gotta finish packing up. It's checkout time, travel day. Yeah, it is checkout time. Chloe just woke up from her first nap, like right on schedule, right at 11. So we're packed up, all ready to go. We're gonna jump in the truck and check out. We've got a lot to do today on this travel day. Uh, we'll get into that more later on, but yeah, time to get out of here. Okay, ready, Chloe? We gotta bring the room in. Let's leave the water bottle behind. Ready? Let's go press the button. Yeah, okay, we gotta remember to bring the essentials. Our truck basket full of all of our, well, I mean, a lot of these things aren't necessities anymore. I just have to like reorganize it, but a bin full of stuff that we need in the truck is always a really good thing to have. We'll need our water bottle because we are completely out of water in the RV, which is crazy. We, I don't think we've ever been completely, completely out before. So this morning we've filled up this water bottle to use for like drinking and washing a couple things and I think we're going to fill it up on the way out too. And our recycling. Alright, we're ready to go. Oh. Oh, look, you still have that tag up from Scotch Creek. Can you move it? <laughs> oh. Anyways, like I was gonna say, look at the lineup for the dump station at the gas station here. Wow. There's no dump station at Little Qualcomm Falls, which we just came from, so we made the plan. We came here last time we were on the island and we knew that they had a dump station here. It's a huge gas station. We're gonna stop, have lunch, fill up with water, dump our tanks. Um, I think we're gonna end up having lunch and just relaxing for a bit and uh, waiting until that line dies down. Cause it's like one, two, three, four, five, at least six RVs deep right now. That's crazy. And while we wait for that dump station line to go through, I'm also gonna run the generator here. Usually when we had our class C motorhome, we would drive and the alternator would run the charge controller top our batteries up and then we would get to a campsite with full batteries or we would leave a hookup site and we would get our full batteries in that way but now that we're going non hookup to non hookup to non hookup to non hookup site over and over again whatever we leave our batteries at the trailer barely gets charged from the truck so we're gonna either have to run the generator lots there which we've been doing already unfortunately or at least as much as we need to to keep all right but now that we're in between sites I'm gonna try and charge it more at pullouts like this so I can get an hour hour and a half charging here we're gonna go to Walmart, get groceries, and maybe Alicia will run in, I'll do it there, and then hopefully we can always pull in full and not have to run it as much in the campsites at least because it's gonna be a whole lot of generator use otherwise with no power ever. Okay, we got to run the generator for about an hour there. It looks like there's no one waiting at the sandy dump, so we're gonna roll out here Go back to the sandy dump line and fingers crossed we just cruise on in now. Hey, we got an open sandy station. Alright, sandy dump complete. 
complete. Got my soap and my little spare tire spot, so hands are washed even though I didn't use gloves. Now we just rinse off. Also, we dumped here, pulled in here. Fresh water is right there. I don't want to run my hose across, so we're going to loop the parking lot and pull in there for the fresh water too. You are getting wet. Oh my goodness. Sprayed water everywhere. That's not oh, good. videos ago now we well for a couple videos in a row we were complaining about our fresh water system because coming from our motorhome it was a little bit different it's well this one is still a gravity fed system just like our motorhome was but in our motorhome we would know when our fresh tank is full because water would just come gushing out of the vent like right beside where you put the water in there's like a vent for the water um, our travel trailer also has that, but it has a different system where in the bottom of the trailer there's two tubes that come out of the fresh water tank, and when it's full, they're like overflow tubes, so water comes out of those. The problem that we were having was that we're thinking that it was like creating a siphon effect or something, or maybe those tubes were too far down into our water tank, so it was saying it was full, but really it was just overflowing and it wasn't quite full yet. So anyways, we figured out kind of like our solution to the problem. Of course you could go and like plug the river flow tubes and we did consider that but we didn't want to like mess with our warranty or anything or have something go wrong and then all of a sudden we have all this damage to our RV or we have unrelated damage and they're not going to fix it because we voided our warranty or something. So we decided we had to go that route but what we did instead is we just keep an eye on our monitor here. So. Each time we fill up water, we do have to take the stairs down, open up the RV, and come and check. But yeah, like it's still leaving empty right now, so I'm just gonna keep an eye on it. Wait till it's like just over two thirds full, not quite full, because once the water starts coming out of the overflow, it, it doesn't really stop. It just keeps going and then ends up leaving us with like two thirds water, anyways. So we like to try and stop before it starts coming out of the overflow tubes. It doesn't always work like that, but that's been our solution. All right, so this whole water situation is taking an absolute eternity. We've been here for like at least half an hour now, and our meter is still reading one third, which is unheard of, I swear. So I don't know, like Chloe's getting really cranky. It's getting to be her nap time, and we we're gonna head over to Walmart so I could get some shopping done during her nap. Uh, we've just brought her out, tried to play in the grass. She just, she's not a very happy camper. So I'm thinking we're gonna call it quits soon and then just like see what happens. I mean, we're only at our next campsite for four nights and I don't know, like we should be able to get by and worst case, if we don't get by, we can like make trips to like the freshwater fill, like the, the drinking water faucets and like fill up a gallon jug and bring it back and dump it in and do that a couple times because like we really don't use that much water when we're camping it's like dishes chloe's baths which we can use pretty minimal water for like our showers which we can go pretty quick and then drinking so i don't know this is just insane we're just starting to flash on the two-thirds full line so we're thinking that's going to be okay. We have about maybe 50 minutes to an hour of driving. So if we fill her right up, I think what happened to us last time is we traveled full for a little bit, maybe two hours. And if you're right to the top, all of that sloshing, every corner, every uphill when you get on these angles, that's going to change your water level and flush you out to probably half a tank anyways. So if you can't fill up at a park or at your campground, 
I feel like filling right to the brim isn't going to make much of a difference anyways, so we're going to let it get to two thirds here, and like Alicia mentioned, we'll go with it from there. I don't know. I'm giving it five more minutes max. So thankfully, Chloe took a really good nap there at least. Got done napping right when Alicia finished getting all the groceries. Ran the generator a bunch more too. We're up to about 80% charged right now, so we're not quite full, but at least from there we can work our way down, run it during the generator hours on and off when we kind of deem fit and we're not getting too close to zero. Yeah, to like put this all into context, I don't think we've really like talked about it too much, but we have 200 amp hours of lithium batteries yeah. and we use a lot of power. I mean, obviously, maybe not obviously to you guys, but we yeah. run a laptop a lot while we're editing the videos. We charge camera batteries, we charge the drone, we charge our phones. Yeah, and Chloe's white noise machine with Chloe's yeah. stuff. So there's a lot of things running and we do use quite a bit of power. Um, like not being in hookup spots is yeah, mom. <laughs> not being in hookup spots is a little bit challenging for us right now just because like we even run the heater some nights too it is a little cold on the island so I, we just are kind of power hogs and use a lot of power but if we were a bit more conservative we wouldn't be having this kind of like power issue and like having to run the generator and stuff so much but anyways yeah we're gonna jump in the truck here. We're off to Strathcona Provincial Park. And it should be about a 50 minute drive to some beautiful scenery. And we never camped there, so we're looking forward to it. Here at the Bottle Lake Campground in Strathcona Provincial Park. Our site number is 50 and from what it looked like online it looked like a really big site like it looked perfectly fine to get into but now that we're in here a lot of these sites look tight and like there's lots of trees and bushes and stuff so we'll see what our campsite looks like. I'm very optimistic that we won't have any issues but just seeing some of these that are like smaller meant for tents and stuff is like mm -hmm. yeah, a little scary looking but we've got this. Here we go. We also don't have any cell phone service, so we'll be using our excellent hand signals. We don't have like walkie talkies or anything either. Um, and Luke's backing in passenger way, so how is that gonna work? Better or worse for mirrors? I don't, I don't really know. Let's we'll see how it goes. Well, we did it. We got up onto our Anderson level loaders to level us side to side two inches. Daddy. So good. Daddy. This site is like, actually, you know what? Most of the campsites that we stayed at on Vancouver Island have all had this like, Daddy. like I said in another video, very lush, very peaceful, dense forest, lots of greenery, fresh air. It's really, really nice and I'm loving it so far. Standing. <laughs> Good walking. I'll go get ball. <gasps> ball. No. That's the camera. Say hi, future Chloe. Hi, friends. Yeah, mom's grabbing dinner. Whoa, careful. Hi. Hi. Good one. Say hi. 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 
All right, so we're all settled into our campsite. We made some dinner quickly and we decided to come check out the lake. Look at how beautiful it is. I cannot wait to bring my paddleboard down here and go paddling, explore it. It's a huge, huge lake, right? This is Bottle Lake. Yeah, I think it connects to a bunch of different lakes and the lake itself is very large. Yeah, so, God, it's so pretty. Chloe's it's, gonna have a blast swimming in it, I'm sure. Yeah, and it's Strathcona Provincial Park, which is like a very large park. And I believe also the first provincial park of British Columbia, Ow! if I recall my stats. Ow! And yeah, it's got such a nice vibe. The north side of Vancouver Island here feels like much more mountainous, but still rainforesty. I don't know, it mm -hmm. feels a little bit different than being like low ocean elevations, but it's really nice. It's not exactly the north side. I mean, it's not like Port Hardy north or anything like super crazy. Kind of near um, like Courtney and stuff like that. Anyway, we're going to conclude this video here though. Thank you all for joining us and tuning in today to the RV adventures. Next time we'll probably be picking up and doing something in the area. We want to find some fun stuff, hopefully here at Strathcona. We hope to have you with us. See you guys then. Right on, Bye. Care.